Hey everyone, I want to talk a bit about OpenSSL and some options you have to secure it or to slim it down, reduce the attack surface as well as reduce the number of unnecessary features that might be included in it. So OpenSSL is great, but it has to support a lot of different scenarios and it might, the binary that you get with your, your typical Linux distribution might not really fit what you need. It might have a lot of additional features that aren't really necessary. And with each additional feature, there's the uh, additional attack surface and additional size and so forth. So one thing I like to do with, uh, with servers, with for instance, web servers, if I'm gonna spin it up for the long term, and it's not just a demo server, is I like to compile OpenSSL with really a reduced set of features and have it include to the, the best of my ability only the features that I actually want to use. So let's take a look at how you can compile a slimmer version of OpenSSL. First thing I want to point you to is on our GitHub page, Stormwind Studios, under S OpenSSL notes, we've got this compilation.md file. And this is these are my notes about compiling OpenSSL, specifically on Ubuntu. Uh, your distribution might not be Ubuntu, so you might have to do some Googling as to what the, for instance, dependencies that you need to install are, but I'll leave that to you. We're gonna demonstrate this on Ubuntu. And let's bring these notes down into the corner here. And I'm already kind of signed into a server. And the first thing you want to do, if you want to kind of compile your own OpenSSL binary, is get the appropriate tools to do that. So we are going to run apt-git, and we really don't need sudo because we're running as root right now. But we're going to say apt-git install build essential. And it will confirm and we'll say yes. And it should really quickly install the tools that we need to actually compile OpenSSL as well as pretty much anything else. So once that's done, we have to actually get the source code, the, the current OpenSSL source code. You can just download that from their site. Uh, by the time you're watching this, 1.1.1G might not be the current, but you just have to substitute in the, the appropriate version of SSL that you wanna use. So I'm gonna copy this in, just so I don't make any typos. And uh, once this is done, processing the manual pages database, we will go ahead and download OpenSSL and begin the whole process of compiling it. And I'll show you a few of the compilation options that I use to get rid of maybe unnecessary features, things that we really don't need. So we're going to wget that tar.gz file, the compressed file, and it will it's pretty fast, at least on this uh, virtual server running in San Francisco it is. And now we've got, if we do an LS of our directory, we've got this compressed archive containing the source code for OpenSSL. So now we have to extract it. And the way to do that is tar-zxf, followed by the name of the archive. And that will just extract it to our current directory. So there it is, OpenSSL 1-1.1.1, or no, OpenSSL-1.1.1g. Gotta get that right. So we'll go into the directory now. And the first thing you have to do is configure it with the options that you want. And I kind of explained the options that I choose down here, but you can always go to OpenSSL's documentation to get a better idea of what options are available to you and what you might want to use. But what we're going to do is run dot slash config. And I'm going to say no weak SSL ciphers. There's a typo there in the documentation, I'll have to fix that, but no weak SSL ciphers. So we're not gonna use RC4 essentially, which we don't wanna use if at all avoidable. And we're gonna say we don't want SSL version two, we don't want SSL version three, we don't want to use IDEA, which is another algorithm, another encryption algorithm, but we don't wanna be using that. At least I don't have any purpose for it here on this server. So I'm gonna say no IDEA, uh, no PS, Okay, so with SSL, um, you have the ability to authenticate using pre-shared keys, but it's pretty uncommon. So we're just gonna disable that. And we will also disable uh, SRP, Secure Remote Password. And I need to remove these dashes. I kind of type them, it's kind of muscle memory, but you need to leave those dashes off. And then when we run this, it will generate the configuration, right? This is the configuration for the actual compilation. So we've got this configured now. 
Now we just have to actually compile it. So the first command we run is make, and you could just run make by itself. But one thing that might speed it up a bit is if you do dash j dollar sign and proc in parentheses, what this will do is it will uh, do the compiling using however many threads are available to your system. So nproc, if we just run that by itself, it kind of prints out how many threads are on this system. So we've got eight. And if we, let me quickly, oh, I guess that command, yeah, it's not gonna be in the history. So if we run dash J, which tells make to use this many threads, followed by nproc in this particular syntax, really what it's gonna do is divide the labor over those eight threads. So we'll run this really quickly. And it's gonna go through and it's compiling all the various modules that make up OpenSSL the different types of encryption and so forth. And it's pretty quick when you parallelize it like that. So it shouldn't take too long. And hopefully I'm not standing here twiddling my thumbs for too long. But once that's done, uh, we've got the, we've got OpenSSL compiled, but we still need to actually install it. So right now it's all gonna be in a directory kind of roughly where we're at as a user, uh, but we want to actually install it in system directories. So the way to do that is really run the same command, but you can tack on install or install as w. So install will install all the binaries and, and so forth, as well as documentation, whereas install underscore sw will install just the, the OpenSSL packages, as opposed to the packages and the documentation. So we're gonna do underscore SW for this uh, demonstration. And it's a lot faster when you skip the documentation, by the way, because it, it takes a while when you include the documentation. Okay, so now if we go to the default directory that this would have been installed to, which is gonna be user local bin, and do an LS, there's OpenSSL. And we'll see if it works, dot slash OpenSSL. Let's just see if we can run it. And it gives us an error. So something that this happens kind of frequently, but you can usually fix it just by running this command LD config. And then if we kind of go back in and try to run OpenSSL, now we can actually run it, right? Now we're in the OpenSSL interactive interface, or alternatively, maybe we want to just see the version of OpenSSL that we're running, which is 1.1.1G. So this is the one that we just compiled. And if we kind of go back to our home directory and say which open SSL. So we are at user local bin open SSL. Great. So that should now be accessible and we can double check this even. Yeah, so now that's accessible uh, system wide. It's in our system path and so forth. So we've got this new open SSL binary that doesn't include some of these unnecessary ciphers and algorithms that really, if you aren't using them, there's no reason to include them because it just in increases your ta attack surface and maybe makes the, the binary a bit larger and so forth. So this is just something that I like to do if I'm actually spinning up a server that's gonna be there for the, the long run, why not just get rid of the extra stuff? So hopefully that is something that is somewhat helpful for you. Uh, this is very straightforward on Ubuntu. Like I said, on other distributions of Linux, you might just have to install different dependencies. And you can compile this on Windows, but that's a whole other kind of process. And compiling it on Mac OS is pretty similar to compiling it here on, on Linux with a few variations. So yeah, there's gonna be variations depending on your operating system. But for the most part, you download the source, extract it, configure, so you can figure how this is gonna be compiled and what's gonna be included using command uh, options like these. And then you actually compile it and then you install it. And maybe you have to run LD config to get it to actually work. So hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully some of these, these tips like the ability to parallelize the compilation will save you a bit of time. And that's all I have for this video. So thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the next one.